Wisdom as the goal. Now, we all have a goal for our life, something that we're aiming for, something that we're shooting for, uh, something that we put our energy towards, all of the experience and all of the lessons that we have accumulated this far in our life. So wisdom in and of itself is really uh, the goal for our life. And I want to give you four reasons uh, for that. Uh, the first thing is, is that wisdom will give us an easier life. What this means is that as you learn from other people's lives, your life gets easier. Now, why is that? Because if you'll commit to being a learner, if you'll commit to being a listener, uh, your life is actually easier because now you're not just aggregating your intelligence, you're now aggregating collective intelligence. You're not just aggregating your lessons, you're aggregating other people's lessons. So really the most valuable thing that you can do is to pursue wisdom. And we do that, uh, we aggregate that, gives us an easier life. Why is life easier? Because what you're going to do is you're going to avoid uh, a lot of the mistakes that other people have made uh, in their life. You can learn from that and you'll say, oh, those are things that I want to avoid. So really key to make wisdom the goal because first of all, you're going to have an easier life. The second thing is you're going to have a meaningful life. Now, we have a certain amount of time on earth and you're going to want to think about why am I here? What am I doing? What is my calling? What is my purpose? As you pursue wisdom, this will become clearer uh, to you. Life will become more meaningful. And the reality is, is that as you grow closer to God, God gives you more clarity about where to spend your energy, where to spend your time, where to spend your money, where to spend your resources. Now, on this point, there are no shortcuts because somebody else handing you their algorithm for a meaningful life isn't necessarily going to help you have one. This, my friend, is discovered through a lot of prayer and a lot of spending time with God. Now, out of that, you'll develop uh, meaning for your life. So that's an incentive to be as close to God as possible. Now, the third thing is that you'll have a blessed life. You will begin to see uh, the blessings that you do have in your life. So Jesus teaches us uh, a few things. One, uh, that you are enough, and two, that you have enough. Now, this is contrary to the culture that we live in. Uh, we live in a deficit culture, which teaches us you're not enough and you don't have enough. God teaches us the opposite. Actually, you are enough because you're made in God's image. Your value for yourself and for your life comes directly from God. That is the great news. Uh, and then you also have enough because if you know God and you have God, then you have everything that you need. So out of that, you'll be able to have the foundation for a blessed life. And then lastly, uh, you'll live a full life, uh, a full life. You will be able to put uh, the ingredients into your life as you get with God and you pray, uh, that really belong there. Again, most of this comes through a lot of quiet time and a lot of prayer, uh, and your life will be full. Now, we all fill our lives with something, and the wonderful thing is, is as you get with God and you pray, He will show you which pieces to put in your life which systems to put in your life, which people to put in your life. Did you know that you allow 
uh, people in and out of your life. And so as you pursue wisdom, makes things a little easier, makes things uh, a little more meaningful, uh, makes things a little more blessed. And then, of course, you'll live. The Bible talks about he who has the son has the life. Uh, that word there, uh, it's an abundance term. It really means uh, life overflowing. Here's the great news. As you pray, and again, as you get closer to God, you'll experience that fullness of life. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Until next time, I hope you have a beautiful day.